previously on Are We Dead Yet? They begin to make their way through the dreadhold to the very bottom of the prison. Eurydice, will you describe yourself first? Okay, cool. So you see a naked ass black dragonborn towering at like six foot nine inches. He has a large, uh, almost tribal uh, tattoo of Tiamat on his left arm. Karen is a typhling, but he gives almost, he has almost no physical features that would distinguish a normal typhling. Uh, the only qualifying markers are that he has bleach white skin and his eyes are like solid red. You're greeted, uh, you are greeted by the entrance of the prison as they open up the doors. M, Kilroy, Silas are greeted by the sight of these two uh, hulking individuals being escorted out. Greetings, gentlemen. But on account of our contract, we will be asking you to equip these fancy silver bracelets. We, unfortunately, will not be removing you from this place unless you place the, uh, the bracelets upon yourselves. Are you saying someone has arranged for my freedom and I owe them a debt? That is the gist of it that I got. I accept. I see no other choice. Silas so will give a polite clap and say, Jeeves. Jeeves will step forward and place the bracelets upon. And in unison, all of the guards just kind of huddle around you, undo the shackles, and shove you out of the doorway. We are now off to meet our benefactor so he can explain the whole thing to us. Look, I'm going to take this deck of cards I got. I'm going to walk into that bar over there. I'm going to find the stupidest person in there, and I'm going to take all their money. That's what I'm going to do. I will come with you. This sounds fun. I'd love to watch this. And as I walk up, I'll just toss the bag on the, on the table and just be like, well, boys, deal me in. I'm feeling hot. That's uh, quite a hefty bag of coin there. Are you sure you're willing to part with it tonight? Oh, I don't think I'll be parting with anything. There's a thousand gold pieces in there. You can count them if you want, but oh, I'm ready. Pertaining to anything specific? Or uh, just I'm, like, I'm, looking oh, to, really? I'm looking to make a quick dollar from someone who's got something dirty to do. He looks you up and down and he goes, something tells me this is probably your lucky day. I need gold. Fast. Willing to kill. You got a job? There's a ship. End of the dock here. Small brown one. Said to have a chest locked away in the back. I want it. I uh, hold out my hand to shake. Yep. Shakes your hand and uh, he hands you a small slip of paper with some information and what looks like uh, some kind of something similar to like thieves can't. It's a uh, passage or bit of wording to uh, gain access to that end of the docks there he's like pacing getting frustrated he might like see a cup on the table like just anyone's cup and like swipe it and start drinking from it in one quick motion you see karen furiously pacing back and forth you swipe somebody's mug chug it slam it down on the ground or on the table my bad you literally just blind over arm throw it behind you and it shatters against this half orc's face. But I'm gonna go for the money if there's a nice little pile on our table. You uh, snatch up a thousand gold. And so yeah, you meet your man at the end of the at the docks there and he sees you. I'm gonna pull the chest out my payment. So as he pops it open, you make out uh, the equivalent of 6,000 worth in gold, few jewels, sorted trinkets in there. He literally just takes out a small pouch, scoops up a bunch and dumps it into it, ties it up neatly. Eurydice, as you are walking up to the bar where Karin is, you are met with him as he is thrown from the tavern through one of the already broken windows. And you guys are sitting there kind of bickering about your, your gods, your doubles, your whatevers, um, <laughs> uh, as you guys are standing in the middle of the street here. And you can visibly see as time passes, as your fight continues to spread from bar to bar, you watch as uh, the chaos kind of takes over the town, more breaking, spilling into the streets. The last war of Eberron is over. The world is divided and torn. Five people now come together to further their own ends. These are dark times. These are the evils of Eberron. So yeah, we're going to pick up right where we left off the last time with you guys standing in the middle of the street. You see the bar fight that uh, Karin started uh, continuing to spill through from building to building. Yeah, it is dead in the middle of the night. I am going to re-enter the bar to retrieve my, my sword. Okay. You know, you have to step over a few KO'd patrons and whatnot. A lot of busted debris, but yeah. You go collect your sword. It's like ah. it's like leaning up against like the entryway, uh, like coat rack or hat rack or whatever. And I just like step in like two steps, turn, grab sword, set on shoulder, like not really caring at the the current ongoing fight, and just kind of like 
Ezio smooth my way back out the door. Iridith is gonna, as you join us, I assume everyone was successful in procuring funds for the airship. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about anyone else. Kilroy will like kind of like slap M on the back and just be like, "Hooey, partner! <laughs> All right, yeah, that was that was some fast uh, finger work you got there. You uh, you ever gamble professionally? <laughs> I mean, when I have to, I will, but it's not the most exciting thing ever. Well, <laughs> I think I'm gonna let you uh, cover both our uh, our airship fare because uh, you uh. You really did some good work there, but I uh, I did cover your escape, if you uh, if you remember correctly. And didn't you lose us money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I, I got those guys to to back off and retreat instead of you know starting a fight, coming after you. <sighs> I guess you make a point. And since we all have to go on the airship together, I guess I guess I can give you the money. My apologies. I had. Uh been consumed by we'll call it impatience as I was not sure how to procure funds for myself. I will however shall we say offer a favor for covering my end. What sort of favor do you offer? One of strength best. I am strong enough myself so I don't think I'll be needing your favors. Uh, So I'm just gonna look over at Charin and be like, well, I guess I can cover you too. Is there anyone else that needs more money that didn't get money? Uh, David, real quick, how much is the airship again? Pretty sure it was 100. And uh, if it wasn't, it is now. <laughs> uh, Silas is going to say, I per se do not have the funds to procure a ticket, but one of my blood does not stoop to paying for airfare. I'm just going to shake their head. Just like, I hate you, neighbor. I look forward to watching this. I could I could always turn you invisible again. I mean that that worked out pretty well last time. <laughs> um, an insurance policy would be appreciated, my friend. But I don't mean they would think to suffer the wrath of the Winthorpington family. You just gonna you just gonna bluff your way on with a a smooth word and a, a family name? <laughs> I gotta see this. I definitely have to see this too. It's gotten me this far in life. As there's just chaos in the background. <laughs> We're just going to walk to the airship. La, la, la. Your assistance in this mar- matter, Miss Meredith, is greatly appreciated. You're welcome. I mean, we're all in this together. Literally stuck together. I mean, at least until we killed this guy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I believe we are bound in a unbreakable contract. And I feel he is more than likely the only one capable of removing these and he holds up the the fucking bracelet thing uh yuridith is gonna look to you and he's gonna sort of have like this uh new look on his face you haven't seen before it's kind of like a a sick smile and he's gonna say no contract is unbreakable kilroy's just gonna be like well (laughs) this is fun and all but uh i am gonna maybe move away from all this uh fighting that's going on in the streets uh why don't why don't we get over to the airship and maybe get our uh get our accommodations arranged <laughs> yes let's move mm-hmm. i imagine just like random debris and and people being thrown around us or having a pleasant conversation <laughs> that is mostly what's happening yeah so you guys are just moving on to the airship correct oh, yep that's fine it is still middle of the night so oh <laughs> Uh, well, I do I do believe it would be also fairly difficult to acquire uh, rooms right now as all the taverns are in the middle of the <laughs> fucking brawl. Yeah, like the whole city erupts in a brawl. Is there like some um, some open space nearby? Like maybe like some like a, a grassy area or a, a patch of unoccupied flat land? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Eurydice is just going to find a suitable spot, uh, preferably next to a tree, and he's going to begin setting up a camp. Okay. He's not going to say anything. He's just going to do it. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Karin will be obviously joining. Sam. How, how's the the night look? Is it like overcast? Is it no no clouds? Yeah, it's a little it's a little overcasty. Some clouds in the sky. Well, what kind of like season? I guess is it is it colder out? Is it warmer? We're gonna say it's fall, and since you're right off of um, a port to the ocean, that it's um, it's windy and fairly chilly. Yeah. 
full. I have cold resistance, so that's cool. With that said, Eurydith is also going to start a fire. Cool. Silas. Jesus. Silas and uh, Kilroy. What are you two doing? So, since Kilroy is still trying to pass himself off as not a Warforged, I roll out of bed roll, I get under my blankets, and I lay down on the ground and go to sleep. It look like I'm going to sleep. <laughs> so, real quick. Do your, do your eye lights, like, dim? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll say that they dim to, like, like a like a light blue. Like a, like, almost like an alarm clock or something. Oh, my gosh. So, real quick, for uh, player knowledge here, do, do our characters know that he's a robot at this point, or not yet? Based on what you guys have done, I would kind of feel like in character you should know how suspicious you are of him at this point you know maybe okay. you don't know he's a warforged unless you think you would have experience dealing in warforged okay okay but maybe he's he's definitely off i mean my eyes glowed red when i saw Eurydith, so that's a it's a good sign i i always was under the impression for me that like we we like he like we don't like tell him that we know but like we kind of know yeah like the <laughs> whole know? time he thinks that we're being full that we yeah. don't have no clue, yeah, but we really do know. Kilroy thinks he's, like, got it nailed in one. Like, he thinks this disguise is working. Whether it does or not, <laughs> completely different story. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. It just was not that great of a disguise, but we're nice enough not to say anything. Because we, we don't, like, care enough or something. Yeah, like that yeah. That kind of thing. But we know. In, in that case, I'll, I'll role play it like this. So uh, after Eurydith gets the fire and you guys kind of move over and uh, Kilroy gets his bedroll and lays down, Eurydith's going to be in the process of taking his armor off and he's going to look to you and go, what kind of animal sleeps in their armor? <laughs> you know, just uh, the kind that wants to be prepared. <laughs> All right. I forgot you were going for a Matthew McConaughey thing. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys just find this small little patch. Imagine it's like the entrance to a big bus terminal, and it's like a small, you know, 15 by 15 patch of grass with a tree right in the middle of the sidewalk there. So that's kind of the kind of area you guys have set up camp here. Not exactly something that's out of place in a town like this, but yeah, you guys curl up and uh, go to sleep in your tents or on your mats. Silas is meditating on his log. And you guys wake up bright and early to the sound of the airship rolling in first thing in the mo- morning. You guys are just outside of town, so as you guys are starting to uh, wake up, you know, you kind of hear the hustle and bustle of people going to work, uh, loading up the boats. You can see into town a bunch of uh, people still kind of getting up from the night before, workers still picking up pieces of some of their bar, just generally still reeling from the chaos of the night. <laughs> Go ahead, get up get my armor put on, get my tent and stuff packed up and be ready to go as fast as possible. Fantastic. Silas will notice that Eredith has stirred and will get up and uh, and prepare himself and be like, ah, it's about time. Yeah, you guys are just going to go straight for it then? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So to be clear, everyone is just paying to get on, right? Well, Silas wants to, I think, convince them. Yeah, I don't have the money, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bullshit my way on. <laughs> I'm gonna try to. Kilroy has offered me some invisibility insurance. Okay. Yeah, so I'll I'll kind of hang back and wait for for Silas to see if he can bluff his way on or not before I. I, can... I mean, you could always just ask for money. <laughs> that is beneath him. That is beneath him, which is why I'm not helping out till you ask. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Silas okay. very much does not want to ask for money, but he legitimately does not think he needs to because he'll just, you know, wave his his writ of nobility in their face and they'll just let him on. I love it. Truly evil. Yeah, so the ship is uh, comes into dock and you guys immediately start rolling over, packing up camp to uh, get on board and it's literally finishing preparations to receive people as you guys make your way up the ramp. You're greeted by two security guards right at the base of the little walkway up there to receive payments and trade you your tickets. Silas, are you just going first? No, I think I'll go last. I'll be. I'll go ahead and be first in line here. Okay. I'll drop the, uh, the gold in the man's hand. Yeah. Nope, that's perfect. Gold up front. He trades you your ticket and he pulls open the gate. 
Perfect. Nice straightforward transaction. Uh, go on through. Fantastic. Everybody else? Yeah, I'm just going to go up, pay for our, all of our money. Mm -hmm. And stay back, though, because I do want to watch Silas do this. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm same. definitely going to stand definitely at waiting. a vantage point where I can see what's happening. Yep. For sure. <laughs> I'm going to be mad if I miss it. Well, I yep. mean, you guys need me anyway. You can't leave me behind. I'm still watching this out of entertainment. <laughs> yeah, so everyone else purchases their tickets and uh, makes their way on board. Uh, Silas, you notice that the guards have kind of taken attention to you since you came with the group and you're the last one kind of hanging out there. And then your attention is drawn to um, aboard the ship where the rest of your party has currently boarded and they're now standing up atop off the side to watch your interaction here. Well, I was like thinking to just approach immediately after them and play it off as they're my entourage. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's do it that way then. So, uh, yeah, I approach immediately after whoever paid last and say, uh, or what is it, the item that I have? It's like writ of nobility or whatever. I'll produce it and show it to the, the guy and be like, I trust this will be enough to, pr to procure my passage. <laughs> I don't know what that voice was, but we'll go with it. Persuasion. So, 19. Oh, nice. I'm going to say you're lucky he rolled real low. But yeah, he is both confused by the, um, just the abrupt interaction of having this piece of paper kind of shoved in his face as you stroll on by. And all he has time to uh, take in is like the words nobility, and he kind of panics really quick, and um, by the time he gets his wits about him, you're already halfway on board, and he just decides to let it go. And I'll flip a gold point to him as I pass as well. Oh like, oh, I have something good on me, chap. Yuri <laughs> <laughs> audibly laughs at this. <laughs> I'm just gonna shake their head annoyed. As uh, Silas comes to the group, you're just, just gonna tell him, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Noble blood can get you far in life. Yes, perhaps I should have been born with a silver spoon in my hand. Well, at least this trip will uh, not involve us sleeping in the uh, cargo hold this time. <laughs> yeah, you guys get to enjoy the, the small amenities that are, you know, offered on this trip. You actually get chairs to relax in, you know, different cabins to go to for resting and whatnot. Yeah. Do you guys, uh, what do you guys do once you board? Uh, do we all have separate rooms? Uh, you have to purchase a room. Oh, if you want to purchase a room for oh, resting. Gotcha. Okay. And how long is the trip? It takes most of the day, so you'll arrive in the evening. Okay, so no need to purchase a room. Uh, Kilroy would like to find like a very secluded spot on the airship, or at least as secluded as possible, because he wants to try something. Okay. What is it you want to try? I want to try and get this thing off by popping my arm off and sliding it down the other end. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I'm still trying to keep up the ruse that I'm definitely not a Warforge. <laughs> I mean, I see a series of points where people are definitely going to figure it out here, but um, you can certainly try. You stick into the role play. I respect it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, we'll say you find yourself a... Uh, it's still early, so the ship is empty. So you slip to the other side of the ship while everyone else is still kind of... Um, reeling from Silas's entry. I just want to see if it'll slide down. It might not. So what I want is a stealth and sleight of hand. Sure. Uh, my stealth roll was a 10, and my sleight of hand was a 12. <laughs> so your sleight of hand is just good enough. You manage to kind of twist your arm, crank it in a weird angle, and you slide your thumb up in and you pop out a main pin holding a joint in, and it pops right out. No sooner do you do that that a... Um, one of the staff for the ship happens to walk around the corner and they just kind of stop in the middle of the hallway and watch this like cloaked figure just take his whole arm off. Uh, and you're kind of left in this little stare off as he just kind of turns around and walks the other way. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And you try to remove the amulet? Yeah, I'm gonna try and slide it down the other end because I assume it can't go over my my hand, because it, it, you know, shrunk down into size, but maybe it'll go the other way. Make me a constitution saving throw. 
I mean, my con's not terrible. That's not a constitution saving throw. Oh, okay. What is it? That's going to be an intelligence saving throw. Okay, well, that's 16 plus 1, because I, I, for- I hit enter before I hit my plus. So, uh, 17. 17? Perfect. You take 18 psychic damage. Oh, fuck me. Oh. Ow. Ow. The second you slide your hand down, you come in contact with this uh, amulet. You go to remove it. You see the entire amulet light up almost simultaneously with what looks like a series of um, blue runes. And then you feel a sharp pain in your um, in your head as you're forced to let go of it. And you kind of fall to the ground reeling. Uh, all right, all right. That, that hurt. That hurt. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll just keep it on for now. And I'll pop my arm back on and kind of readjust my shirt <laughs> and go about my, my m- the rest of my day. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is everyone else doing? Uh, I think Yurdith will be enjoying the view on one of the uh, the, the sides of the, the top deck. Okay. Karn will actually be doing the same. Uh, he'll have like that that stance where he has the his sword like the I guess I should say blade, but it's not really a blade uh, on the ground, and he's like holding the the handle uh, in both hands, just kind of staring out the window. Um, it's just gonna be very far away from them. While well, they have their little Titanic moment. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just in the corner, just fucking watching people. Are you following me? I am not. I am simply appreciating the view as I have uh, I have never been on one of these before. It is quite interesting. Perhaps you should appreciate the view somewhere else. Why? I am not bothering you. Yes, well, your presence is annoying at the least. Oof, straight to the point. That is your problem, not mine. Oof. You guys just um, meander about the ship until it launches uh, about mid-morning. It's a little less packed than it was on your trip by the down here it's a nice brisk morning so as you guys take off you know it's pretty chilly windy as you guys are flying away nice easy trip for the first part of the morning you guys are all still just hanging out up on the deck right correct could i have passive perception from everybody yeah my my passive is 12 my passive is 13 12 mine is 11 15 so m you're the only one who sees it entering early afternoon Uh, on your guys' trip back to the city. Even this far out, you know, it's still pretty overcast, foggy, chilly outside. But as you guys are flying through all the clouds and the the mist there, you are looking off the uh, back of the ship. And in the distance, you make out what looks like something moving in between the clouds. Oh, fuck. (laughs) It's dragon time. Wouldn't be an airship without getting attacked by something that flies. Shit, we're all in different spots, huh? Yep. Well, I suppose uh, uh, Karn and Earth are next to each other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the only thing, and I'm up there too, so I'm going to walk up to them and be like, hey, there's there's something in the clouds right now, and it's coming towards us. Something in the clouds, you say? Yeah. And it's coming towards us? Yeah. Can you not see I it? I haven't noticed it yet, but now I'm excited. Oh, God. This will be quite <laughs> interesting. All right, you collect Karn and Yuridith. Yeah, isn't everyone else kind of far away? Okay, I kind of missed where everyone ended up being because of yeah, that. Yeah, I assumed everyone was just kind of doing their own thing aboard the deck of the ship. Yeah. So you're just running around collecting everybody? If I have time. I, didn't, I thought I was coming quite close, so. You made it off in the distance, but it's still within uh, eyesight for sure. I'll grab Silas and kill Roy while I'm at it. Cool, yeah. You just run around the deck really quick, dragging everyone with you, and you make your way back. Now uh, a small crowd has collected and you can very easily make out what looks like another airship pulling up off of the um, starboard end of the ship. And as you take that in, you now begin to see a second ship pulling up off to the uh, port side as well, just a little bit lower. Is it pirates? We're about to be attacked by sky pirates. You are absolutely about to be attacked by sky pirates. Hell yeah. No later you see flags start to unroll down the mast there you know the typical skull and the swords white and black outline it is a very similar looking thing except it has the face of a dwarf with a uh, beard full of dreadlocks and braids um coming down it and you recognize this as the um 
flag of Dreadbeard. Absolutely anybody who's ever heard of airships or pirates or anything knows who Dreadbeard what is. Do, uh, what do we know about Dreadbeard? I can give you a history roll for, for me. Uh, yeah, if you want to get into the specifics of it, you can roll some history on it. I got a 19. It's a nat 20. I got a minus one to uh, intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'll still give you the nat 20. You know Dreadbeard is a dwarf pirate. He commands a small armada on both land or, or sea and air. Ooh. Dreadbeard specifically targets ships that work for working governments and businesses never really striking on any of the little people or whatnot, but he does so ruthlessly and efficiently. As it is rumored, he uses mind powers to coordinate his crew and interrogate his enemies. Have I have I run into any of Dreadbeard's pirates before? I would say probably not. Okay. Okay. Or maybe actually, you spent some time as a, a good adventurer, so it is possible that you yeah, probably I was a good come across for about four years. So we'll say I've, I've done it before. Um, how how did those fights go for me? Uh, you have never encountered Dreadbeard himself, only um, some of his crew, but they do tend to act and fight as a unit. Okay. So uh, I'm going to see the flag and I'm going to call out, ah, it is Dreadbeard who comes to fight us. Be on your toes. His men can fight. All right. All right. Well, uh, look, I'm just a, a private citizen here. I... I don't feel any need to fight anybody. <laughs> uh. You guys are uh, talking about fighting and pirates, and the crowd around you starts to panic even more and worry as they start all start trying to flood down below deck to safety. Yes, yes. Herd yourselves like cattle. It'll make their jobs easier. Well, look what you did, Crowar. You just freaked everyone out. <laughs> uh, Cyrus is going to be uh, pulling his gloves on and say, oh, I wonder how much the passengers will pay for their lives. As a good friend of mine once said, chaos is a ladder. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a Game of Thrones reference. Silas and Peter Baelish, though, they're like like this. They're like best buds. You guys are all standing on the rear end of the ship. You see these two uh, pirate airships, flags fully unfolded now, moving in towards you in kind of a pincer position. The crowd of people is now flooded the walkways to the uh, lower decks. It's all caught up there as they're all trying to fight each other getting in. A bunch of the guard are trying to man stations for the onslaught, but the ship is not equipped to deal with any kind of fighting. And I need everyone to make me an athletics uh, check, please. I will let you I will let you roll acrobatics instead. Oh shit, really? If you're acro- yes, if your acrobatics is better, I will let you roll acrobatics. Yeah. Oh. I, I got a nat up. one, David. <laughs> You got a nat one. Yeah. You got a 22. So I'm rolling 1d100 right now. I got an 86 for the percentile. Oh, yeah. We don't we do not do percentile on fails, remember? Oh, right. Yep. I'm going to get some kind of uh, debuff. debuff. 18. Okay. So who got Ooh, a I rolled a 21. Who got 15 or higher? Me. I. Pretty sure all of us, but John. Yeah. Every- no, I got a nine. A nine. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> Kilroy, take eight bludgeoning damage as you fall from your feet and are thrown into the um, side of the banister there, side of the ship. As you guys are taking in these two ships moving in from the back, a third ship comes flying in from the uh, clouds beside you and rams you. Everyone else manages to keep their feet. Kilroy, like I said, you fall over take that damage going to the banister, or Uridith. Also eight bludgeoning damage, but um, you completely lose your footing and you go tumbling from one end of the deck to the other and your foot goes straight through the um, side of the banister there, kind of spraining it a bit. So you're gonna take minus two on athletics checks. Okay. For the rest of the day. Is my foot stuck? No. Okay. I would like to, if I'm able to, I'd like to do something. Absolutely. So I'm gonna, I wanna get to my feet and I'd like to take uh, three of my javelins and attach like my, the flammable head of my torches to them to make flaming javelins. Okay. And then if you'll allow me to do that, I would like to take each of those javelins, ignite them and throw them at a ship's sails to try and uh, damage the ship in a way to hinder its ability to continue flying. Okay, attack roll. Yep, you want three different ones, correct? Yeah. Wait, what is the range on javelins? 3120. Okay. So the one that is next to you 
that just rammed you, you can make a normal attack on. The other ones you would be with disadvantage. disadvantage. Got it. All right, so here goes my first one. Uh, 18 to hit the first one. That is a hit. Add 1d4 fire damage and high or low. Uh, we'll go high. Okay. We're on the damage right now. Uh, so 13 damage total. Fantastic. And the sail catches fire. I'm going to throw my javelin. I'm going to roll the other two attack rolls now. So here's for okay. the one ship, nine for that one. And then the second ship, or the third ship, sorry. Uh, I got a 14. Wow. That is a miss and a hit. Perfect. I'm going to roll more damage now. And higher look. I uh, will go uh, high again. So 13 fire damage. Okay. This one does not catch a blaze. You manage to throw the javelin, and it goes through the um, sail tearing part of it. But, no um, fire. I got the one. I'm happy. That's all I planned on doing before initiative order starts. Yeah. We're actually just going to start doing initiative like that. So who's up next? The next Is there any people the coming out? Not yet, no. The ships are all still in the same position. And they haven't initiated any kind of boarding. Yeah. <laughs> They just rammed us, which I guess is an act of aggression. So, you know. <laughs> I recognize uh, the sails. I know what's I know what's happening. It's, it's yeah. I mean, it's life or death. Like I'm not I'm not fucking around. Kilroy will pick up on what Yuridith's putting down, and uh, I'm prone, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'll stand up, and uh, I'll just start. I'll follow. I'll follow his lead, and I'll start blasting with some Eldritch Blast. You want to blast the closest one to you? Uh, yes. Ooh, give me an attack roll. And I get two attacks with my Eldritch Blast, or two beams, I should say. 25 and 22. Hot diggity damn, those both hit. 17 force damage. And that'll be my turn. Awesome. Asalus will ready his weapon on the hatch of the ship and ready action to shoot whoever pokes his head out twice. Sounds good. Sam, I'm gonna take the chance to um, hide and take the ready action too. In case I see someone's face. You roll a stealth for me? Sure. 19. Hot diggity fucking man. Okay. That leaves uh, Karn. Karn is uh, obviously standing, like, kind of on the edge, uh, facing the all the craft. And I'm going to cast Thaumaturgy on myself. And he is going to say, Pirates of Dreadbeard, you do not wish to come aboard our ship. For if you do, you enter into a contract that will end your lives and send you straight to Avernus. Should you leave now, such a fate will not befall you. You will be able to continue to live and take your plunder elsewhere. But should you fight us, you will all die. So says the Lady Zariel. You can roll intimidation. That's a nine. All right, so... Um... Yeah, everything goes down. Yuridith and Kilroy start launching shit at the various ships as they all kind of move in. Silas and M take cover and ready up for the fight. And amidst all of this, Karin, you know, braces himself at the end of the ship, gives his grand speech. You hear inside your head, Karin, just after your speech. Oi, great to talk, lady. I don't fancy your chances. And I need a dexterity saving throw. I was waiting for the cannonball. Right, just to blast him. Is it a effect that I can see? Yes. Then I have advantage. I mean, at least I had advantage because the first one's a net one, but the total is six. Oh shit, ouch. Right, I guess, I guess rolling a three is better than rolling a net one. But still. 24 force damage. You hear the ramping up of some kind of noise, and you see the side of one of the ships off to the left light up, and a beam of arcane energy is launched at the deck right where you're standing. Kilroy and Yuridith, I also need dexterity saving throws from you now. Oh, fuck. 10. 7. We're going down. Oof. Uh, 24 damage each. Oh. <laughs> As the ship off to the right of you guys also plays into the side of your guys' ship. And now you see the ship um, that had rammed you move in as uh, crewmen start to pile up onto the 
top of it and begin to um, line up at the edge to board. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's their turn. But yeah, you see um, Bishop is pulling up next to you. There's probably about a 10 foot gap between the two of them now. You see, you count about 15 figures as of right now, all dressed in a similar garb, um, pretty good leathers with red and black coloring and tunic in between. All of them are bearing the uh, same symbol that you see on the flag somewhere, each armed with a fair amount of weapons, you know, from hammers, swords, um, cutlass. I believe M and Silas both have ready actions to shoot. They do. Silas first. Oh, ready. 13 and 27. Uh, 27 hits. There we go for eight damage. All right, yeah, you uh, line up your shot and take off one of the guys on the end there, and you see him kind of reel over as you uh, pick him off in the shoulder with that second shot. Um, M, your turn. Okay, um, I have sharpshooter feet, so don't tell me if I uh, got someone yet or not. <laughs> okay. Keys. <laughs> 18. That is a hit. So who? Are you aiming for a different guy? Uh, sure. Why okay. not? Okay. There we go. 18 plus 12. Ooh, 30 damage. Yeah, so we'll say you uh, take a shot at the guy on the other end of the lineup there, and you clean shot. He's down. Yay! I'm... Fuck yeah! I know I'm going to hide again. Take my bonus action to hide. Yep, roll me a new still. I'm very hidden right now. <laughs> Nat 20. Yeah. yeah oh my god. I'm very Just hidden. Okay. I'm Invisible. Her. Yep, pretty much. Perfect. Back to the top of the order with Eurydice. All right. So uh, Eurydice just took a beating. So I'm going to go ahead and use my action to lay on hands myself. Okay. And I don't think there's a limit to how many points I can use there. So I'm just going to go ahead and use 15 right now. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, draw my sword and my shield. And I'm going to expend one of my Queen's Mark charges for the uh, extra D4 on my damage, which will be necrotic. So we'll say I, I draw my sword and I'm going to point my sword towards the ground and you're going to see like a green energy wash over it and it just kind of faintly glows a sick green color. Then I'm going to take a ready stance and face the nearest enemy and prepare to uh, engage in combat. Yeah, sounds good. You just gather yourself up back on your feet and you ready yourself up against the lineup of guys. Exactly. Heck yeah. Kilroy. Yeah. Are we still, we're still doing bonus action to drink a health potion, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to chug a health potion. Okay. Oh, that's right. We have those. Like one or two. I heal for four. <laughs> oh. So I have I, Woo. I have six health points right oh, now. This no. is good. <laughs> like you only have six left? Uh, yeah. Okay. I guess they forgot we're a little squishy still, huh? I mean, when you're taking like 20 damage yeah. at a time, no one's no one's tough. I got a little mm -mm. explosive happy. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it's okay. It was intentional. So, David. Yes. You know how you gave us a whole bunch of gold that we could buy things with? Yeah. So I did a little something. Okay. I bought this. It's 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 a very uh, it's, it's 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 an Italian thing called dinamite. Dynamite. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> dinamite. <laughs> That's a one, the spicy Dina Mite. <laughs> so as a, you have to now forever refer to it as Dina Mite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we'll all be like, what the fuck is Dina Mite? So my question is, are these guys still kind of like clustered up together? Oh, fuck me. What do you on, mean? On the You're deck of the ship? Up, like part of the oh, ship. Oh, yeah. Wait, on the, uh, on the other ship? On the enemy ship, yeah. Yeah, no, they're all lined up against the banister, ready to board. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. A character combined sticks of dynamite together so they explode at the same time. Each additional stick increases the damage by 1d6 to a maximum of 10d6. The burst radius by 5 feet to a maximum of 20 feet. So 1 is 3d6 within 5 feet. So I'm going to bump that up by 3, so 4, four sticks total. So... Uh, that's 66 and a 20 foot radius. Uh, they okay. so so that's basically 40 feet diameter. Anyone in that 40 feet diameter of the ship 
uh, and I'm going to try and throw it behind them. Uh, needs to make a uh, dexterity saving throw. Please, please don't drop that. Yeah, please don't bomb me. I haven't even gotten into a rage yet. Improvised weapon. So attack roll. No proficiency unless you are somehow proficient. I don't think Kilroy is the tavern brawler type. Attack roll, no proficiency. Fun times. Don't Drum fuck roll. me. Oh, God. 12. <laughs> I mean, that'll get it within the within the zone, I guess. It'll get it away from us. Nope. Yeah, that's perfect. What is the what is the DC to beat? 12. 11. Nice. 6 D6. Bludgeoning damage. Oh, it's bludgeoning? Yeah. For some reason, I was expecting it to be force. You would think, but... Force, fire, dynamite damage. They all take 24 dynamite dam- yeah! dynamite damage. <laughs> what was the radius? Uh, 20, uh, 20 feet radius, so... That's a big dynamite. <laughs> dynamite. I was so confused when you said that. At first, I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck is... I, was, I thought you were going to talk about your donkeys for a second. I was like... Did the donkeys end up on the airship or something? Oh, right. Who's, who's been taking care of your donkeys for the last three days? The shifters at the, the pub aren't going to, or at the inn I'm staying at, they're not going <laughs> to steal do your anything donkeys. to hurt my donkeys. Yeah, but are they going to feed them? I hope so. <laughs> I guess that's up to David. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> oh, no. You come back. You come back and somebody ate them because they starved to death and died. Was the tavern of shifters. Oh, God. Awesome. Kilroy. Yeah. You, uh, what, what, uh, what inspires the, uh, move to toss the dynamite? Panic, planning. Totally, no, total panic because I am hurt. Awesome. I, th- I throw it over, and as I throw it over, I just yell, Yippee Kaye, <laughs> motherfucker! <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, you manage to, uh, you get the bundle of dynamite just perfectly behind the line of pirates who are barely able to turn around and take in the site before the majority of them are blown away. They're dead. You count five left standing, and a huge chunk of the enemy ship has also been eradicated, but something you did not account for is that the ship being so close, you caught a bit of your own ship as well. Oops. And you now see the side of the of your ship. Yeah, there's a big hole in the side of the ship. Goddamn. We're about to, the Oopsie ship's about doodle. to go down. We're about to kill some people ag- indirectly. Was that the same ship that had the burning sail? The one that's rammed into yes. us, Luckily, right? there's, there's still one that's in perfect flying yep. condition. Well, I'm going to hop onto that one. I don't know about all these other passengers, though. I was going to say, I'm 95% positive that every single one of us does not give up. Yeah, hell no. I care about my survival. Not to be mean to you guys, but yeah. I don't care about you guys either, really. If someone dies, they die. And then I want to take my 30 feet of movement to get as far away from, like, the open as possible. Like... Yeah, we'll say you uh, mad dash for the same cover that Silas and um, M are in. But actually, M is so well hidden that you don't see him, her. Awesome. I'm cool. <laughs> cool. Silas. I'm assuming the other ship is like their guys are doing the same, lining up on the banister and whatnot. Um, the other ships, are they still have a height advantage on you, and they're still far enough out that you can't make out any bodies up there. All right. I'll start picking off the leftover dudes. I'll make one attack on the nearest guy I can see. Do you want to take out the guy you attacked earlier? Uh, yeah, if he's still standing. He is. Four, wow, 12 to hit. Doing so good. That is a miss. <laughs> there we go, 21. That is a hit. For seven damage. Yeah. Uh, do you want to describe a killing blow? Uh, just center mass shot. It sends him over backwards. Yeah. And then I'm also going to nice, uh, side this approvingly at my gun and say, Jeeves, <laughs> your maintenance skills need work. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, M. Yeah. Give me a new person. Yeah, you still got four people lined up on the uh, side of the ship there. Sweet. All right, well, let's take a chance. Why not? I'll do the sharpshooter feat. 14 hit. Yes. Sweet! 
11 plus 16. Oh yeah, he did. Oh, sweet. Perfect, yeah. Another nice clean shot from the shadows. You actually scare Kiroi a little bit as he runs over and hides with you. And that random arrow flies out from beside him. Is that your turn? Uh, and then I'll take my bonus action to hide. As per usual. Uh, 28. Freaking rogues, man. God damn. Yeah. They do one thing, but they do it very well. I totally forgot to write Karin in the initiative work. Oh. I almost well, missed you. I was at the end anyway. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> I was like, all right, and now the ships are, wait, what? <laughs> I was about to be very sad. Yeah, Karin, your turn. Uh, so there are people on deck, on our deck, correct? No, they are on the deck of the other ship. That ship is 10 feet away from your ship. You can jump on the ship. You jump the banister. Yeah, quick athletics roll. You should be able to make that. Actually, I think you can do it without the With a roll. like 40 foot wide gaping hole in it. Hole in the side I mean, that never stopped nobody. <laughs> oh, I mean, I. Right. Hey yeah, man, if you're so gonna Karin, die, you do it like a badass, right? Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, as, he, as he gets up from the, uh, the magical cannon blast, you see that evil rage-induced grin come back to his face. And as the, the flaming halo forms above his head and his eyes roll black, he, he simply says, uh, still thaumaturgied, then you have signed your contract in blood, he says, as he uh, dashes forward to uh, leap onto the enemy ship, sword above his head. Yeah, your strength score is like, what, 16? 17. 17, yeah. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to be able to leap at least that many feet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. up to that many feet. Uh, if he has 10 feet of space to run, run before he hits it, yeah. There you go. So yeah, you make your way across. Uh, you are staring down three pirates. Cool. Uh, I would like to bring, because uh, I am like swinging down as I'm jumping. Mm -hmm. So I would like to hit the first person. Sure. That is a 17 to hit. That is a hit. And then that is, all right, so for 13 bludgeoning damage from my sword and an additional five damp radiant damage as I uh, bring my sword down upon him. Yeah, he did too. He just goes full, like his head caves in into his, uh, into his chest <laughs> as my sword like squishes the shit out of him. And as I land on my feet, Onto the deck, I take a, like, sideways cleave at the next guy. Yep. Don't forget to take your um, temporary hit points. Ah, that's correct. How much temp HP do I get? Total damage from the killing blow. So 18. Is that from his weapon? Mm-hmm. Nice. What more could a barbarian mm -hmm. want but more damage and health? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's uh, with, a. However, bad. with the risk of going into a frenzy. It's okay. David's about to regret my item on my next turn. I regret nothing. That's okay. Uh, there's just an how interaction. I don't think you uh... intended. I planned on it. Yeah. There's always something. Right. I rolled a nine to hit. That is a miss, my friend. How unfortunate. Yeah. So you crumple in this first guy's skull, and his whole body just kind of collapses under your sword um as you swing it around to take the other guy out he just manages to dodge at the last second so you watch it graze the tip of his armor but no contact that is my turn fantastic everybody on the the charter ship that you guys were riding make me a athletics check 22 i got a 14 14 22 i got a 19 Everybody but M manages to keep their feet. M, you are knocked prone. As the other two ships from behind move in above your guys' ship in a kind of pincer move, and then you see several guns come out the side of the ship there and launch cables into the deck of the ship. And they kind of hook in, and you feel the ship lurch as it becomes attached to them now. And now you see bodies start to pile out over the banister, looking down over the deck of you guys. Karin. Yes. You got a couple friends. I do. I have an 18 to hit, a 9 to hit, and a 20 to hit. Two of those hit. Fantastic. 
yeah, as the last three pirates on the ship that you're on uh, all move in to take swings at you. Two of them connect and hit you for nine, well, 13 damage slashing. Fun stuff. Back to the top, you're it. Alrighty. So real quick question, how far below the deck did those lines hit our ship? The anchors or hooks that they shot looked to be about as big as your head. So you imagine they're embedded about a foot into the deck. Okay. And is it chain or like a rope? It's like a cable, almost like a steel. So I'm just going to stick to my original plan. So I'm going to go ahead and can I, uh, can I do the Queen's Mark as an action or a bonus action? Or is that only as a bonus action? I guess if you want to waste your action, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to expend one action to uh, harden my scales and get a plus two to AC. And then as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself and get an additional plus two to my AC. Yeah, you think I didn't think of that. I know. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure. I would have overlooked that one if I was like making that. Just as sort of like a free action here, not looking to do anything. I'm just going to scream at the uh, pilots on the ship or the pirates on the ship across from me. Come at me. Sounds good. So yeah, you uh, ready yourself up for the next wave of the fight there. Kilroy. Yeah. Okay, who's next to me? Silas and... M. And M. Yep. Okay. So the ship that that Karan is on is close enough, is is within like 10 feet, you said? Yep. Because I need some HP back. And there's still two guys over there? Uh, There are three. Three. Okay, cool. This will work, I think. I'm going to jump over there, you know, take a running jump and jump because I got a strength score of 12, so I can make it. Yep. Perfect. And I'm going to cast a Vampiric Touch. Roll to attack. Uh, 19 to hit. That is a hit. Okay. 3d6 necrotic. 16 necrotic damage to the dude. And I regain hit points equal to half of the amount. Okay. So another 8. So that's uh, 14. And then I use my bonus action and chug a health potion. (laughs) (laughs) Another seven, so I'm at 21. I'm almost at half health, so that's good. There you go. And then yeah. And then now that I'm on this ship, my shadow is in dim light on the ship. Mm-hmm. I can command it to do whatever. I'm going to command it to find the controls of the ship. Is that a free action? Yes. Okay. Or it's considered, it's listed in D&D as a special or other action. Okay. The shadow moves on your initiative, so it's, okay. yeah. So I'm just telling it to go into the ship and find controls. Sounds good. And Karan, you see basically Kilroy's shadow, like kind of like stand up and then just sort of like run off somewhere. <laughs> I was expecting like the shadow to just kind of be like still a shadow against the the ground and then like take off. Oh, yeah, that could that could be fun. That could be fun. <laughs> yeah. So it just slithers away, basically. <laughs> Sounds gravy. The guy that I attacked, is he still alive? Oh, no, he did. Okay, good. He did. Silas. Do, wait, did you jump onto the ship, Kilroy? Yes. Okay. The one with burning sails and a 40-foot hole? Yes, because it's the only one that's not attached to us right now. I was going to say, it's not attached, so if you wanted to get away, it's probably your best bet. That's true. With burning sails? <laughs> I mean, look, you're not going to... I mean, as long as it you get it far enough yeah. down to where you could jump off the ship. A, a controlled <laughs> crash is better than fighting two more ships worth of pirates. Yeah, especially since <laughs> exactly. it kind of seemed like Dreadbeard himself might be here. I, I kind of picked up on that because he talked into my brain yeah. directly unless his uh, subordinates have that same ability. How far is the uh, the other ship like hole wise uh, there's still a section of it where you can leap across and it's the 10 foot distance so as long as you have a strength score of 10 or more you can make it oh, just okay. fine I take it you don't I, d- I think I do I do but he's not gonna jump <laughs> what, are you, what are you take him for oh. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna walk over to he the has gap. his right. echo go there um, <laughs> I don't know how far it is from me I've got uh, 30 feet of movement it's probably 20 feet from you okay yeah Okay, so I'll move 15 feet towards it. So I'm five foot away from the 10 foot gap. Okay. And then I'll summon my echo on the other side of the gap Mm -hmm. and spend 15 feet of movement to swap places with it and my bonus action. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, such fancy. Hey man, these bones, these bones can take a jump. (laughs) It's too good to fucking jump. And then I'm going to target 
uh, the nearest guy to me and take a shot at him. 13. <laughs> Jesus. That is a miss. And 12. Oh my god. Ah. Oof. <laughs> you jinxed it. Also a miss. Better than uh, a 1. As long as it's not bad. This is true. Yeah, barely. You're you're scraping that uh you're scraping that line. Um yeah, well, that's it. Okay. <laughs> M. Yeah. What you gonna do? Yeah, I'd like to stand. Okay. And I'm guessing I see everyone running over to the ship. Yep. And I can't say is that my action by the way to stand up? No, it's just movement. So yeah, you spend what you have thirty movement, so you spend fifteen to stand, you have fifteen left. And I'm 20 feet or 15 feet away from the edge of the ship? Uh, 20. Okay. Well, everyone's on the ship, right? Everyone's on the other ship right now. No, I'm I'm standing my ground on our ship. I, I don't think I realized everyone was attempting to jump ship yet. Oh, okay. Well, I'd like to, um, yeah, I'd like to start moving my ass yeah. over. And can I possibly take the dash action as my um, bonus action to maybe hopefully get on the ship? Do you have it as a bonus action? Yes. Yeah, I can take a bonus action to take the dash, disengage, or hide action. Then yeah. Cool. I'm jump onto that ship too. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that makes everyone except you. Is that your turn? Yeah, I can't do anything else. Okay. Karn. I'm gonna do that that typical barbarian thing and just uh, kill everything in my path. Smack them down. Oh no, eleven. All right, sorry, Karn, but yeah, it's a swing and a miss. That was the bottom for you guys. So now we move on to the ships, which are hooked in place. You guys see the bodies uh, peering over the side and they are starting to lower and you count several pirates as they're starting to climb their way down the cable lines there. And then the other two guys, we're gonna have one attack you still, Karn. <laughs> of course, I love that laugh. That either means you rolled an at 20 or an at one. <laughs> Oh, he rolled in that one. <laughs> so we're going to say that he panicked having all these people bored and him and his buddy being the only ones left. So he takes a mad lunge at you to try and uh, stab you. But you completely step to the side just as a no-brainer. And he overswings and you see him go over the side of the ship there. Yay. And you hear him scream as he falls. <gasps> the last pirate sees his buddy fall overboard and he panics and he goes to jump over the banister. I will let you make a opportunity attack. How's a 17 to smash his ass? Uh, that is a hit. Uh, 14 dabblage. Awesome. I believe, since it is still this first turn, my radiant or my divine stuff work, an additional four radiant damage. Okay, so 18 damage total. You get the choice to take that or give it up as temporary HP. Uh, I will accept that as more temporary HP. Sounds gravy. And yeah, as he goes to jump over the side, he makes it over the railing before your um, side swing connects with him. And you just bat him out of the air. And he goes flying off in the distance, blood splattering. As he starts to fall, you see parts of his body disconnect from him as he tumbles towards the ground. Ah! Here it is. All right. Has anyone made any mention that you guys are all jumping ship? No, we've just done okay, it. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> well, because we saw, I, I like to think I saw because with yeah, uh, yeah. Silas and Kill. I, I just want to so make sure them. that I have no reason to do what makes sense here and join the party. To be fair, you were, you I were staring yelled. down the ship when you readied up, right? Uh, I was staring down a ship. I don't think we ever specified which one I was staring down. I Yeah, I assumed you were staring down that ship with all the yeah pirates okay, on cool. it. Okay, cool. Then... I'm going to go ahead and make the jump then, because that's the smart thing to do here. My strength score is 18. Are you going to give it to me, or do you want to roll? No, you get it. Perfect. Yeah. I'm going to jump over. Is there anyone left on the ship or left on the top deck? It is just you guys. Cool. How much movement would you say I have left then? You have 10 left. 10 left? All right. Then I would like to move to the nearest door to go below deck and begin uh, clearing out the lower decks on this thing. Sounds good. Yeah, you make it to the uh, stairway. Perfect. Kilroy, your turn, your shadow, how does it communicate with you? Does it just like, do you just know? It, yeah, it's like, it can't speak. It's more like a telepathic bond. Perfect, yeah, it essentially alerts you. It made its way down below deck and there's a special staircase that goes up into the, um, um, oh my God, cockpit. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna look at everyone that has jumped over and I'm just gonna be like, <laughs> so uh, I'm not really the uh, heroic type. I'm not, 
I'm not really interested in saving all those people on that ship. Uh, what say we uh, delicately crash this thing into the ground and uh, make our way on foot? I couldn't agree more. And does it look like we're interested in other people? I mean, clearly not. Y'all jumped over here too. <laughs> yeah, let's get going. I'm gonna point at the dead bodies though, and I'm gonna say, save, save those for later though. We might have use of them. <laughs> use? Yes. I will I will not be elaborating right now. Oh, I'm just gonna stare at you and just shake her head in disgust. And then I'm gonna start making my way to where my shadow is to try and find this door. I'd say you can make it with a dash. Okay, yeah, sure. Gonna run past me in the stairwell? So literally, Yuridith goes, surveys the area, and then, yeah, Kilroy just mad dashes past him. Um, and yeah, you meet up with your shadow with a small area kind of built up above, just up above the front end of the deck there in very classic pirate fashion. It's got the uh, big oversized steering wheel, and there's a whole, like, kind of desk top setup with um, different, like, runes and such that are all light up, lighting up, and it's giving off a small humming sound. Ooh. Action, bonus action, done. Uh, yeah, I'm just right. gonna free action to just yell up and be like, Any anyone know how to pilot these things? <laughs> and that'll be it for me. Cool. Silas. Yeah, I'm gonna need another turn to get my dude over here. So for now, I'm just going to file in behind Yuridith. And okay. uh, I guess for now, we're ready in action for two shots in case we see someone. Sounds good. M. I'll stay up and... Yeah, I'll stay up and take the ready action and hide to keep an eye out on anyone who might be coming onto the ship or, you know. Okay. Roll for stall. Yes, please. 21. Mm-hmm. That's your turn? Yep. Karin. Karin is going to continue raging until either the, the one minute is up or he's just going to wait for, yeah. I guess he's going to ready in action to murderize any other pirates that come to bother us. Sounds good. Yeah, so you see the two ships, the two other ships are still locked onto that one, and you see um, a handful of pirates from each ship begin to start taking the deck across, and they do make eye contact with you, but they're barely beginning to pile on before they take you in, so none of them have started to make their way over yet, and we are just gonna move back to the top with Yuridith. All right, so I'm gonna just start clearing the lower deck, so I'm gonna move until I find someone that isn't one of us. Awesome, yeah, you move down the stairs and uh, the opposite direction of where Killer went. Can I have a uh, perception check, please? Of course you can. How's a 12 for perception? Not good enough, my man. That's okay. They'll find me. They can't hit me, but they'll find me. <laughs> Just for uh, flavor's sake, I'm doing this like SWAT style. Every door I see, I'm kicking down, you know, bashing it open with my shield. Shield up, sword over the top, like. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm ready. I really hope Kiroi knows how to fly a ship, or at least attempts to. <laughs> how difficult can it be? You pull up to go up, and you push down to go down. Unless you pull up to go down and down to go up. Fuck inverted controls, man. Yuridith? Yes? As you kick in the second door on your way down, you miss a pirate hiding just behind the corner there, and he lands a nat 20 against you. That's okay, because my AC is 24. Nah. <laughs> and I know, but I'm not lying. You can look at the die. It's right here. It's okay. I, I trust you, and I hope my trust isn't misplaced. However, it's a shit crit anyway, because he only does um, six slashing damage. Okay. Uh, that being said, you still have your turn. So I would like to uh, make a longsword attack against him. Mm -hmm. How's a 26 to hit? That is such a hit. Uh, how is 14 damage total? Um, that is killing blow. Awesome. So he's going to hit me from behind, and I'm going to kind of like turn to him, and I'm going to use the edge of my shield to uh, hit him in the neck and pin him up against the wall, and then just drive my sword into his stomach. Jesus. Is there anyone else in this room? There is not. OK. And I'll just assume I'm out of movement, and I will call that my turn. Sounds good. Joroy. You gonna yeah. try and navigate the ship? Okay, so I'm in this room and the ship is glowing with like a magical energy. Yeah, so you have what's what looks like kind of a think like a spaceship panel type thing. 
but on it is like assorted raised and lowered um, sections that are covered in runes that are all lighting up in different colors. Okay. The one time I didn't take comprehend languages. You can roll me an insight check. Sure. Or investigation. Okay. I'll go with insight because I am a little uh, better at that. More insight ish. <laughs> yeah. 11. Okay. So after studying this for a second, just kind of taking it in, in the still kind of in panic induced state, you know, the pirates are boarding on the ship next to you. You step up to the wheel. And as you do, when your feet fall into place, you see two panels similar to what's on the one uh, in front of you light up in a similar style, similar color with runes beneath you. And as you kind of take the um, wheel and you lean over to take a look at them, the whole ship jerks to the left and you guys all start moving away from the original ship. You're about uh, 30 feet out now. Oh, perfect. Cool. I, I fell right into it. Then I'm going to just focus on keeping keeping this ship steady. Yeah, and just getting the hell out? Yeah. Perfect. Next in the order, Silas. All right. So Silas is going to make his way downstairs behind Uridith. Okay. Um, Yeridith is in one of the rooms, I'm guessing? Yes. So if you make your way down the stairs, there is another set of stairs about 10 feet in front of you that goes up to where Kilroy is, or there's two small hallways that go down back around the staircase you just came from. Yeridith went down the left one. Okay, then I'll go down the right one, summon my uh, shadow, and send him in the closest door I see. And he has my perception score and stuff. I, it doesn't quite specify in here, but it seems like I can just see through him. Oh, you can see through him? I'll tell you what, I'll look it up after session so we can kind of be clearer on it. But um, we'll say, we'll still have you roll a perception for me, a perception roll. That is nine. How is an 11 against your thing? Uh, miss. Sounds good, yeah. So it moves into the first room you come across and um, similar similar to uh, Eurydith, another guy leaps out at it, just completely whiffs the attack. You still have your action, I believe, if you wanted to take a move against I him. I do. So I'm gonna make two uh, musket attacks on this guy, a rifle attack for 22 and 14. Both hit. For a total of 20 damage. Yeah, he's dead. Excellent. I will also step up behind my shadow and look for myself to see if there's anyone else in the room. There is not. Excellent. Then I will uh, also assume I'm out of movement and prepare myself for the next. Cool. M, you're up. Do I see anyone? <laughs> I mean, you have people moving across the deck on the ship across from you that you guys just jumped from. Yeah, but no one's like... No, there's no one... We're like moving away. Are they like trying to get on? No, they like can't they... get on at this point. <laughs> I was gonna say, do any of them look like they have a, a, a strength score of 30? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, is anyone about to like rage their ass onto here? Otherwise, like I'm not gonna shoot them. There's no point. <laughs> and you see from the top ship, a half orc leap off the side. He dives towards, through the air towards your ship. <laughs> uh, no, nobody is leaping at you. And yeah. Kilroy mostly accidentally has managed to get you guys away. Cool, cool. I'll still keep the ready action, but I'll just stay up top just in case, because you never know. Sounds good. Karan. I guess I'll proceed with everybody else and begin searching this ship for, fle- for fresh blood. Sounds good. Yeah, you move down. Uh, do you want to follow Yuridith or Silas? All right, so I follow after Silas. Sounds good. You move into the room after him? Yes. Cool. Do you enter? Do you kick it down? Do you... I shoulder check it. Perception check? That is a five. Ooh. How's a 17 to hit? Uh, that hits. Oh my god. Three slashing damage. As uh, you shoulder in this door and you kind of take it in, one guy manages to run up behind you and slash at your back. <laughs> Apparently it does nothing. He didn't even tickle me. Yep. I'll say you still have your action if you want to take him out. His blade barely even, like pricks my skin i just like in one fluid motion without really even looking like if it was silas who did it i would have i would hit him too i turn around and under swing i don't know how to like golf swing swing almost yeah black knight great sword swing uh miss one within 11 
And since I miss, I'm going to like bring it back down for 16 to hit. There we go. That is a hit. For 14 bludgeoning and and seven radiant. Sounds good. He dead. 14 plus seven is 21. Yes, I will take that uh that temp HP. As I I totally like glorify him. There is a there is a beautiful red mist. As you just split him essentially. Yeah, as I just pulverize him, because you can't really split somebody with a uh, with a blunt weapon. <laughs> yeah, if you try hard enough. I mean, yeah. It's not exactly a 50-50 split, but you know, you they're they're in two it's pieces. It's definitely severed, yeah. Fantastic. To the top, you're close enough that you hear the commotion of the other ships as they're boarding. In the distance, you can hear some of the crew as they start yelling, or not crew, passengers. But yeah, you guys are making your way away from them to the top with your You're still sweeping the lower. Yeah, still sweeping the lower deck. So I'm going to expend all my movement to find a guy. And then I'm going to expend all my actions to kill the guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to say that you guys, uh, by the time you make your way to the end, you are confident that the uh, rest of the ship is empty. Perfect. Then I would like to go find those magic cannons and become a magic cannon operator. Yeah, top of the deck. Perfect. I make my way there. Ship is empty. I'm going to say we can move out of initiative order now. Kilroy, what are you doing? Just steady as she goes, but I am going to call for someone to bring me one of the bodies of the crew, at least one, but preferably all of them. Okay, uh, we can actually say that I, I heard you that, and I'll just pick the guy up that I was standing next to, there that, that I just finished off, and I'll, I'll drop him off on my way out. Silas and um, Karin? Yeah, Silas is going to immediately uh, start searching the holds for any kind of booty. Sure. Investigation roll from you, uh, Karin? Uh, 21. Okay. I will also drag any bodies back to uh to kilroy as all the bodies in one place will also serve my my own personal uh indulgences as you bring in some of the bodies karan kilroy says you know it, it it just seemed to me that you know i i am uh well versed in the ways of uh, necromantic uh, magics and uh couldn't help but notice that all these lovely folks in uh, life probably knew how to pilot these things. So maybe with just a little necromancy and uh, <laughs> a little bit of luck, we can have a, a whole pirate crew <laughs> at our beck and call. I will only grant you one for temporary usage before his soul is also sent to Avernus. Pretty sure you can send the souls and he can still have the bodies. Unless your soul harvesting involves destroying the bodies. I mean, how many of the bodies aren't destroyed, <laughs> considering dynamite and <laughs> that sword? Are we about to crash anyway? Not dynamite. Though? Dynamite. Dynamite. Uh, yeah, we haven't I determined see- whether we're no, going to crash right. it. Cool. Okay, so Kilroy, do you stop piloting the ship? It's weird. So animate dead. It just says I imbue a target within range. So I don't think I have to mm-hmm. touch it. So I think I can... I mean, you still... You still have to go through the verbal and somatic and everything, right? Oh, I guess it's true, huh? Oh, yeah. wait, I, I have a, a sentient shadow that can take care of this. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. So I'll... Uh, so your shadow literally raises the dead. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'll have my shadow hold on to the, the, the wheel of the ship while I do this part. Okay, yeah, your shadow steps into your place, and you guys just kind of continue flying off to, uh, just in the same direction, away from the overall show behind you and you cast Animate Dead on, you cleared three, four, I'm gonna say you manage two more from the explosion, so five bodies. I think I can only pick one, okay. unless I'm casting at a higher level, so. Okay. So yeah, so just this one target races up as a zombie, and the command I give it is basically pilot, <laughs> take care okay. of, yeah, handle, handle the ship, you know? Yeah, it steps in for your shadow, but you just keep flying in the same direction. Yeah. And I'm going to kind of hang out for a little bit and like watch it and make sure that it doesn't like screw up, you know, like I'm ready to like push this thing out of the way and like take over if necessary. Okay. I would definitely have it like not like go crash descent, definitely have it descent to a point where it's like not too far above the ground. 
I was thinking, yeah, we would jump off before the crash actually happened. If we're crashing, I don't know. Are, are we crashing, crashing or am I able to actually kind of keep it steady? For the most part, it's technically steady. It's shaking or vibrating fairly violently. Um, your mast is still on fire. Your ship has burned, or not your ship, but your sail has burned away entirely. Yeah, you're moving at a, at a moderate pace. <laughs> okay, well, I will, as long as we're not like, die, like crashing, then I'm good, we're good. I guess we'll see how things go for now, though. <laughs> awesome. So, you're Dith and Kara and collect bodies. You raise one. M, what are you doing? Um, I'm just going to unhide myself and just, I guess, chill <laughs> on the ship. That's it. Where have you been? Hiding in case anyone came onto the ship that wasn't supposed to. I see. You move without being seen. Yeah, that's the point. I don't really, uh, I don't really want to get shot at. I prefer that everyone knows my presence. Well, good for you. Thank you. Well, while y'all are interacting, Karin is using the pool of blood from the the dead people. <laughs> Finger painting. To start laying out a pentagram. Um, I'm still searching, but I guess we can resolve that next time. Oh, yeah, that's my bad. You, between the bodies and whatnot, you didn't find any kind of like... A uh, pile of loot above um, on the ship, but you did find um, some maps of the area. Uh, Twenty-eight gold between all the bodies, and then their various weapons: daggers, scimitars. I leave the weapons. Take everything else. Okay. Some destitute pirates. Or we, or we didn't take the flagship. Or we were the first, uh, the first ship raided for the day. <laughs> Somebody call higher low. Hi. Always. That's cool. This is more fun anyway. Yeah, you guys go about um, go about your business there, settling in. Kilroy, you get your body animated and you have him take over as you're kind of observing. Everything seems to have calmed down a bit as you guys are making your way away from the overall battle and possibly back on track towards your destination. When you hear what sounds like grinding as the ship itself begins to vibrate again, even more violently than it has been, you feel the ground beneath you kind of give a little bit your stomach's turn as you begin to nosedive the entire panel goes black steering wheel locks up as you guys make your descent towards the ground thanks for listening to this episode of are we dead yet intro and outro music by dave cole of the four orbs podcast Our intro was a custom commission by Dave Cole, and the outro is The Cliff. Find more of his work on YouTube by searching for D. Cole Music. That's D-C-O-L-E-M-U-S-I-C on YouTube. Background music tracks include Barroom Brawl by Sword Coast Soundscapes, used under an attribution license from Creative Commons. Find them on YouTube by searching for Sword Coast Soundscapes. Additional background music includes Nighttime Medieval City, Fantasy Tavern, and Tension Track by Plate Mail Games, used under license purchased through DriveThruRPG.com. Age of Steam, Steampunk Airship, and Pirates by TabletopAudio.com, used under an attribution non-commercial 4.0 license from Creative Commons. Sound effects used from Freesound.org under a public domain dedication. Additional sound effects used under license purchased through Humble Bundle. We'll be back in two weeks with our next episode. Bye.